Well, thank you. So great to be here. I don't know. I'll say Jackie Beat, age eight, Scottsdale, Arizona, 1971. <laughs> but this person's name is really Kent. Oh my God, it kills me to even look at that. Oh, if your name is Caesar, see me after the reading. <laughs> I uh, remember my mom dressing me up in these fabulous late 60s, early 70s outfits that were really only appropriate for an adult appearing in a production of Boys in the Band. But I loved being fashionable, especially as I got a little older and became a full-fledged teenager. Now, if I had to choose one movie that completely changed my life, it would have to be Carrie. Carrie came out in the summer of 1976 when I was, drum roll please, the tender age of 13 years old. I'll wait while you do the math. <laughs> That's right. I am older than dirt, people. Unless you've been living under a rock or inside a bottle of Absolute, you must have heard about the recent rash of young people who've committed suicide due to severe bullying. I hate that fucking word. To me, that's like referring to rape as severe flirting. These boys were tormented and tortured. Now, whether they were actually gay or not really doesn't matter. The mere fact that they were perceived as gay and therefore less than does. And if this can happen in 2011 after Will and Grace and Ellen and Rosie and Elton and the Scissor Sisters and RuPaul's Drag Race, Adam Lambert, Jane Lynch, Neil Patrick Harris, Glee, Ugly Betty and Modern Family, and all the mainstreaming of homosexuality, we're in big trouble. But back to Carrie. It was a low-budget summer horror movie for teens, and it's an emotional roller coaster that featured valleys and uh, that featured valleys of sadness and peaks of triumph. The movie is scary and touching and funny and sexy and campy and stunning, but ultimately sad. If I had to summarize Carrie and why I love it so much in just one sentence, it would have to be: Don't pick on the freak. <laughs> be very careful. You see, Carrie White has powers that no one knows about. Amazing powers that she has had to control and hide her entire life. Sound familiar? When she's pushed too far, she uses those powers to exact revenge on her tormentors. It's strange, but high school is the only place where the most boring, middle-of-the-road, lowest common denominator idiots rule the kingdom. <laughs> Five minutes after graduation, the real people, the so-called freaks, take over. While Ken and Barbie go to work at a bank or sell insurance and start having babies and do exactly what is expected of them, which is very little. The freaks beautify the world. Thank you very much. <laughs> we make people dance, and most importantly, we make people laugh. I would rather die from a flesh-eating virus than attend one of my high school reunions. <laughs> Why the hell would I want to catch up with a bunch of boring people I never liked who are on their third marriages and will probably try to sell me Amway? They don't deserve me at their reunion. I wouldn't change places with the vapid prom queen or the brain-dead star quarterback for anything. Why in the hell would you want to be Kate Goslin when you could be Kate Blanchett? Screw them all. <laughs> High school is like a box of rocks. It's so easy to get through it when you're just some plain brownish gray pebble lost among all the others. But imagine a big rock in there, like ten times the size of all the others. Or an iridescent opal with its ethereal rainbow always twinkling. Or a diamond. Of course those little pieces of gravel are going to try to chip away at that big rock in an attempt to make it as small and worthless as they are. Of course those plain, nondescript rocks are going to scratch at the opals and the diamonds and make them as dull and lackluster as they are. Any parent or teacher who is not telling young people who are gay, or bisexual, or transgender, or special in any way to shine like the gems they are has blood on their hands. You are the adults, and you need to love your children more than some archaic book of outdated rules that was written thousands of years ago by a bunch of men, not by God, in an attempt to control the unwashed masses. Religion is notoriously anti-nature, and being gay is natural. And the inability to accept the fundamental biological reality, reality of gay people is the ultimate ignorance and arrogance. And ironically enough, it is also the ultimate insult to God. Anytime you judge me or any gay person, or anyone at all for that matter, for any reason, you are spitting in God's face. <laughs> Creative, sensitive young people killing themselves is the saddest thing imaginable because of all that lost potential. It's a wasted life. 
And you know what? So is the life that is lived following a set of arbitrary rules and sitting in judgment and generally making people feel less than, defective and like they don't have a future, all in the name of an invisible man in the sky. Shame on you. So to the freaks who are struggling right now, I say this. Just hold on because your day is coming. High school is not real. These people will mean less than nothing to you before you know it. And if you're one of the tormentors or any authority figure who feigns ignorance and looks the other way, may God have mercy on your soul. I hope that at least one part of that aforementioned famous book of rules is real, because in my opinion, there is a very special place in hell for you. I wrote that right after that week where it was so that I was angry. I'm usually much funnier than this. <laughs> uh, my first famous person same-sex crushes were Robert Conrad in the Wild Wild West. Always stripped to the waist in pants two sizes too small. Robert Reed on the Brady Bunch, which looking back is kind of disturbing since he looked just like my dad. <laughs> and Cat Stevens. Oh, yeah! Oh. <laughs> what a beauty. Yeah, uh, my name's Kent, Jackie Beat, and I was born this way. Yeah.